investigate his claims, examine the evidence, make your decision. It is nearly time for the Passover feast and Jesus is about to enter Jerusalem. Huge crowds flock to see him after hearing the news of the raising of Lazarus. These people praise Jesus as the king whom God had promised to send. The majority of the crowd were focusing on this idea that the promised king would use his power to overthrow the Romans. They failed to take into account the prophecies concerning the sufferings of their promised king. The next day, the news that Jesus was on the way to Jerusalem swept through the city. A large crowd of Passover visitors took palm branches and went down the road to meet him. They shouted, Praise God! Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hail to the King of Israel! Jesus found a young donkey and rode on it, fulfilling the prophecy that said, Don't be afraid! people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming riding on a donkey's colt. His disciples didn't understand at the time that this was a fulfillment of prophecy. But after Jesus entered into his glory, they remembered what had happened and realized that these things had been written about him. Many in the crowd had seen Jesus call Lazarus from the tomb, raising him from the dead and they were telling others about it. That was the reason so many went out to meet him, because they had heard about this miraculous sign. Then the Pharisees said to each other, There's nothing we can do. Look, everyone has gone after him. The time had come. Whilst Jesus entered into Jerusalem through one gate, many lambs were being ushered into the city through another gate. This was in preparation for the many sacrificial offerings at Passover time. Remember long ago that God had commanded his people to take a perfect lamb on the 10th day of the month. On the 14th day, many innocent lambs died in the place of many guilty people. Jesus, the chosen lamb of God, knew that his hour of sacrifice was coming soon. Some Greeks who had come to Jerusalem for the Passover celebration paid a visit to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee. They said, Sir, we want to meet Jesus. Philip told Andrew about it, and they went together to ask Jesus. Jesus replied, Now the time has come for the Son of Man to enter into his glory. I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat is planted into the soil and dies, it remains alone but its death will produce many new kernels, a plentiful harvest of new lives. Those who love their life in this world will lose it. Those who care nothing for their life in this world will keep it for eternity. Anyone who wants to serve me must follow me because my servants must be where I am and the Father will honor anyone who serves me. Now my soul is deeply troubled. Should I pray? Father, save me from this hour. But this is the very reason I came. Father, bring glory to your name. Then a voice spoke from heaven saying, I have already brought glory to my name, and I'll do so again. When the crowd heard the voice, some thought it was thunder, while others declared an angel had spoken to him. Then Jesus told them, the voice was for your benefit, not mine. The time for judging this world has come, when Satan, the ruler of this world, will be cast out, and when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this to indicate how he was going to die. Jesus uses this farming metaphor to explain to the crowd that his death had a purpose. It was going to produce life. Once again, Jesus draws our attention to the cross, where he would bear the judgment for the sins of the whole world. He knew that the task ahead was going to bring great trouble to his soul, 
but this was the reason why he came, to defeat the power of Satan, sin and death. The crowd responded, We understood from scripture that the Messiah would live forever. How can you say the Son of Man would die? Just who is this Son of Man anyway? Jesus replied, My light will shine for you just a little longer. Walk in the light while you can, so the darkness will not overtake you. Those who walk in the darkness cannot see where they are going. Put your trust in the light while there is still time. Then you will become children of the light. After saying these things, Jesus went away and was hidden from them. But despite all the miraculous signs Jesus had done, most of the people still did not believe in him. This is exactly what Isaiah the prophet had predicted. Lord, who has believed our message? To whom has the Lord revealed his powerful arm? But the people couldn't believe, for as Isaiah also said, The Lord has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts, so that their eyes cannot see and their hearts cannot understand, and they cannot turn to me and have me heal them. Isaiah was referring to Jesus when he said this, because he saw the future and spoke of the Messiah's glory. Many people did believe in him, however, including some of the Jewish leaders, but they wouldn't admit it for fear that the Pharisees would expel them from the synagogue, for they loved human praise more than the praise of God. Jesus, the light of the world, was going to be snuffed out. But if we put our trust in Jesus, we become children of light. We no longer have to walk in the darkness of sin. Many people believed in the message of Jesus, including some of the Jewish leaders. However, there were those who remained in their unbelief, just as Isaiah the prophet had predicted 700 years before. Jesus shouted to the crowds, If you trust me, you are trusting not only me, but also God who sent me. For when you see me, you are seeing the one who sent me. I have come as a light to shine in this dark world so that all who put their trust in me will no longer remain in the dark. I will not judge those who hear me but don't obey me, for I have come to save the world and not to judge it. But all who reject me and my message will be judged on the day of judgment by the truth I have spoken. I don't speak on my own authority. The Father who sent me has commanded me what to say and how to say it, and I know his commands lead to eternal life. So I say whatever the Father tells me to say. <laughs>